Hi everyone. So this is the third time making this video. So yesterday I made this video twice and there was no sound. I'm sorry about the background noise. Uh, there was no sound. I made it two different ways. Today I tried to go live on my um, YouTube page. It would not allow me. So, okay, we're going to pray that this works and I will most likely follow this up with a blog on my page but um, I was so excited yesterday I had to share some things to me yesterday was just a monumental day and it was a a, a day that was almost like when uh, there's an announcement that it's the end of a war and even though I know that you know our war is not over and that there maybe difficult days ahead I was so excited about the decision to overturn Roe versus Wade and before you shut me off change the channel because you don't agree please just listen for a few minutes because you know I just I have some things I want to share about that and it may be something that you haven't heard before um, so I'm excited for our country to uh, begin again seeing the sanctity of life and appreciating and valuing every human life uh, as something that God creates, you know, as some, someone that has a purpose. Um, I'm hoping that this, uh, this ruling will uh, continue to move us in the right direction and eventually eliminate abortion altogether in our country and then that other countries will see this and that they will also follow in turn and and see the error of the ways um, babies lives are important and they have a plan and God creates every one of us for a reason um, it says in Psalm 139 13 for you formed me uh, for you formed my innermost parts you knit me together in my mother's womb Isaiah 45 9 again not the same person not the same time period says and now says the Lord who formed me from the womb to be his servant you know we all have a purpose here on the earth we all have a reason that we're alive God wants to use every one of our lives for something wonderful and good and if these babies are not given a chance to fulfill their purpose what might be missing in our world what is there that that could be so much better because of 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 one or two or a hundred or all 60 million babies so, um, Job 31 15 did not he who made me in the womb make my servant and did not the same one fashion us both in the womb so to me it doesn't matter if you're rich or poor if you are in a struggling country or the richest country on the planet it doesn't matter if you're educated or not educated your life is worth something And God is the one who made you and he is the one who loves you. And even if you're a mother or, or a worker that had, you know, a mother that made a choice for abortion or a worker in that field, God loves you. And if you just reach out to him, he forgives you. He, he, he can forgive you and heal those places in your heart that hurt because I know taking life is not easy and there is a consequence there's a pain and a shame and a guilt that is carried and then the hardening that follows that would be very painful and God has not forgotten you Psalm 71 6 says upon you I have relied and been sustained from my birth you are the one who took me from my mother's womb God gives the baby's life he brings them forth in life and he is the giver of life and the taker of life but we're not we're not God 
and we don't get to choose. He does, and we don't often understand why some people pass away and others don't, but it's not for us to make that decision. It's not out of convenience, and it's not out of um, fear. This is not a um, an action to be taken because it's inconvenient to be pregnant or because you're afraid of being a parent or you're too young, you know. Um, and I have to say this, and this is not uh, always well accepted, but even in circumstances when the pregnancy happened outside of the mother's will, which is a terrible traumatic thing, and I pray that there is healing for all of those that that's happened and that that sexual traumas you know uh, just move to the side as we begin to understand that sex is not the answer um and violence related to sex is 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 not feeding anything good in the lives of those who perpetrate it but it's not the baby's fault however they came to be it's not the baby's fault and if we can just love the baby enough to give them life and then seek out help from uh, counselors and, and, and others and those in the body of Christ who would help to lift up those that, are, are, that find themselves in scary situations or, or situations that, that are not their fault and all of those who, who don't know what to do. I see that there's a responsibility of the body of Christ for us to reach out and to help and to educate and to um, provide assistance and then um, you know if you can give that baby a chance then you know it can be raised by someone to to learn and to to grow and to love the Lord and to have a chance to fulfill their purpose so as hard as that may sound there are a lot of things in life that can be hard but loving another human enough to give them life is to me pretty basic and it seems to me like society has been um, confused. And so much of the time, those that, that scream the loudest about um, my body, my choice, and, and are all in favor of abortion and use it as a um, form of birth control, they may also be the ones who are yelling, you know, save the whales and what about the seals and, and, um, you know, adopt the dog. And those are good things, but how can you hold higher the life of an animal than you hold the life of a human? These babies are humans. They're, they're people. I understand it's easier to push something aside when you can't see it. But is not all life precious? Can a puppy or a kitten be worth more than a baby? And then the abortion industry has been monetizing the slaughter of our innocent babies for 50 years and probably for longer but I believe there's witchcraft involved and that there are offerings involved and that there's greed and power behind it and that it is not to help women it is to line the pockets of people who are selling these slaughtered babies for medical research and to use um, for cell regeneration and all different kinds of maybe beauty project pro products and and medications and and uh, it's not it's not worth a baby's life. While we all want to be beautiful, and I understand that we may have all come in contact with things that have come out of the use of fetal cell research and use knowingly participating in those things. This is, I think that 
I think that it's sad and I think we may all have to think about it, you know? Life is life. Life is life. Uh, one of the most interesting stories to me um, in the in the Bible in regard to uh, life in the womb was when um, Mary, the mother of Jesus, found uh, herself to be pregnant, and uh, she was only like 13, 14 when she had Jesus, and she was very young. Their culture, you know, married and had children very young, and she was betrothed, so she was engaged, you would say, or promised to Joseph, but they had not uh, been officially married, had not consummated that relationship, and she was a virgin. And in that day, she could have been stoned as an adulteress uh, to be found pregnant outside of wedlock. And um, what a brave thing. You know, we think that we find ourselves in scary situations, you know, because maybe mother doesn't know how to take care of a child or maybe they're too young or they don't have money and they all these different things and that that might be frightening for sure you know there are answers there are people there's help but she could have been killed on the spot tortured to death by stoning and yet she said yes and she loved that baby so much that she she gave up her right to everything. So Joseph thought it best that she go where she would be safe. And she left and she went to her cousin's house. Her cousin was Elizabeth. And Elizabeth was older and had not had children, but was pregnant with John the Baptist, who was Jesus' cousin. And when Mary came in and greeted Elizabeth, John leapt in her womb at the sound of the voice of his Lord. He knew Jesus was there. And the Holy Spirit came on Elizabeth and filled her. And just the presence of Jesus in the womb was recognized and was honored that day. If one baby can recognize another baby in the womb. How much is their life worth? I know that as a mother, I have had four children. I know I've shared this before, but they were all premature. Two of them were too small. And I gave birth to them. I would not allow them to just take them. And um, they, they looked like mom and daddy and my son he lay in my arms while he had his last breath and it, he suffered tried to breathe you know I mean, that was 18 and 19 weeks he was a he was a baby he wanted to hold my finger he just they are babies i I could feel their personalities when I carried them. And those of you who are mothers, I believe, know that you can sense your baby. You know if they're okay, if they're not okay. You you begin to get a feel for who they are and how they act and when they're active and what foods they like and all kinds of things when you're pregnant. They're babies. It's not a clump of cells. The story of Elizabeth and Mary is in Luke 1, and the scripture that I was referring to is 41, if you want to read the story. Again, it's Luke chapter 1. And I just think that's beautiful. I think that as the body of Christ, we need to step up and we need to educate people about what sex really is and what it does. And while many of us have made wrong decisions and have gone the wrong path and have done things in the wrong order and, and have had to learn from it, you know, there's a time where you can reach back and you can explain to the next generation so that they don't have to feel that same way. Um, sex 
binds people together. So sex was meant to be an act of marriage. And when you have sex, you become one person physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And uh, it's been said that even your DNA is exchanged. And um, there is a tie there that is very, very strong. And when you have sex with multiple people, and especially all at once, and, and you know, over time, it just little bits of you intermingled with multiple people and multiple ties and then confusion and pain and shame and despair and whether you think it's wrong or not you're tied to so many people you may not even realize the effect that it's having on your life. You may not understand why you feel certain ways. You may not know why you feel confused, why sometimes you're like this and sometimes you're like that. Um, you know, being spiritually connected to a lot of people and not knowing what they're into, not knowing what they're doing, not knowing what you've exchanged, not knowing what their DNA is like, not knowing how, what their, uh, you know, mental, emotional state is, that opens a lot of possibilities. And so, you know, everything that God tells us is not about religious activity. He knows what's good for us because he knows how we're made. So understand that if he says, please wait for marriage, because that is that commitment that you know you're gonna stay with that person. You know that they match you. You know that, that uh, you know, if you have asked him and you've chosen the right one, that you are connected to someone who spiritually, emotionally, physically, is complementary to you and brings you good things and does not tie you to things that are detrimental and harmful to you. And um, that being said, for those who have gotten caught up in that and are trying to fill a place with that and are trying to make the pain go away, all it does is make it worse. And then the babies that come out of that who are slaughtered or who are are left and not taken care of, not not provided for, they're the ones who suffer. So, you know, uh, two things. One, be responsible and think about your own health, not just your physical health, but your spiritual and emotional health when it comes to sex. And think about the baby and give them a chance and make sure that should a baby come to this world he's given chance of life and nurtured and loved and and know that even their life in the womb is important and the things that they encounter and the places that they are and just pray over that baby and if you can't take care of them Please seek out someone who can and and as the body I don't know what that looks like does that look like Christian children's homes because there will be babies that need love and need training and need education and security and does that look like more adoptive homes more foster homes I don't have all of those answers but um, God does I lived in a Christian children's home as a child my parents were house parents and I, I did not feel like it was a bad place. It was a good place. I enjoyed living there. I have family members who still direct a Christian children's home. And uh, I spent a lot of time there as a child. And they would bring the kids to our house and sleep over and all things. And, and they, were, they were nurtured and they were protected and they were taught about God. And so these are not bad things. It's not a bad thing. Um, I don't think that we have enough Christian children's homes. And there may be days ahead where we have to find a way to take care of children who came into the world and their parents were unable to take care of them. But it's so worth loving a life and seeing what God has in store. I mean, what if Mary had said no? What if Mary tried to take her own life or tried to end the pregnancy? What if she was afraid and, and she couldn't go through with it? We have, we, we have our Savior who is still alive today. He's very real. 
he he was born in the flesh as a baby she did not have tons of money they they were not rich people they they were young and unmarried at the time and God provided and Jesus did amazing things and he is the savior of the universe and You never know who you might give birth to, what their destiny is. I just wanna pray for those of you who are listening, those of you who have stayed with me to the end of this video, I thank you. I just wanna say I'm, I'm excited for our country to have a chance to be redeemed, to be forgiven for this sin of bloodshed and to start new and really learn how to love one another and understanding the sanctity of life is an important part of that lord we thank you so much that you're doing a mighty work in the u.s and around the world and i thank you lord that you are lifting up your standard protecting your babies and blessing us all with a way to heal from these things that have happened in our country, Lord, now for 50 years. For those who have been damaged and hurt in any way, whether a child or a, a parent or a worker, I pray that your peace would fall upon them, that you would forgive them, Lord, of, of any knowing sin and that you would Reach down, Father, and heal the places in their heart that have hardened or are hurt. Forgive us, Lord, for standing by and allowing this to happen. Guard our country and cover it in the blood of Jesus. Bless our leaders to make good decisions, Lord. I apply the blood of Jesus against any attack or plan of the enemy against our nation. I thank you, Father, for your favor and your grace. I love you. Thank you for listening. I'll talk to you again soon.